This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin's huge accounting win that just happened yesterday. Now, accounting changes are not generally something that sells clicks. The public's eyes tend to glaze over, and this is one reason that this has not made a lot of news, but I think it's extremely, extremely important for Bitcoin institutional adoption. So this was the headline from the Wall Street Journal yesterday. It was in the CFO Journal part of the paper, which uh, may not be the most interesting for most people. I personally find these accounting changes quite interesting, and they tend to have very long term impacts as well. Here's the headline, FASB settles on fair value accounting for measuring crypto assets. The method would allow companies to recognize losses and gains immediately. So we have to go over some terminology really quickly here. FASB just stands for the Financial Accounting Standards Board, which is an accounting standards board in the US. GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And we all know the SEC, which is the securities regulator, in the US, the Securities and Exchange Commission of which Gary Gensler, whom we often speak about, is the head. So in the US, the SEC has put FASB in charge of setting accounting standards, which are also known as general, generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP. So that's the basic terminology. Before this change, Bitcoin was treated as a long-lived intangible asset whose price was reviewed only once a year and reported in financial statements and, and uh, earnings reports. If the price of Bitcoin under this old system, if the price of Bitcoin went above the company's purchase price, the company could not increase the value of the asset on its balance sheet, which is also, also called writing up the asset, unless it first sold the Bitcoin and converted it to fiat. On the other hand, if the price of Bitcoin went below the company's purchase price, as has happened with many companies like MicroStrategy and Tesla, for example, the company had to decrease the value of the Bitcoin on its balance sheet, in other words, write down the asset, until it converted the Bitcoin to fiat or sold it. And as part of this, as part of this write down, it also had to take an impairment charge, which led to lots of scary headlines that could only go one way. So we saw these, we talked about them before. These are just paper losses. These are accounting technicalities where MicroStrategy took $147 million impairment charge. Tesla had to do something similar. These are not losses that have been locked in. These are mark to market losses that then flow over to the income statement. And as such, these could only go in one direction. Under the previous version of this accounting, you could only take impairment charges. You could never write up the value. So what's happening after this change? We're moving, we're going to be moving, at least in the US, to fair value accounting. And this is what will probably happen in all the general large uh, economies around the world as well. Bitcoin will no longer need to be classified as a long-lived or long-lived intangible asset. In fact, it will be treated like any other financial asset, like stocks or other financial assets on the balance sheet. Gains and losses on Bitcoin will be based on the current fair market value and can be recorded and can be reported quarterly so companies can mark up their position as well as mark it down under the previous regime as we said you could only mark your position down and never up which led to some very unfair comparisons so if your bitcoin let's say you paid a billion dollars for your corporate bitcoin and then bitcoin went down 50 percent to and so the value of your position was now 500 million dollars now let's say the Bitcoin went up 20x in the next bull market. So it goes from its value on your balance sheet goes from 500 million up to 10 billion. Under the old regime, under the old accounting regime, it would still be valued at 500 million on your balance sheet until the end of time or until you sold it. You could never write it back up. Under this new fair value accounting, you'll be able to write it back up. Now it's still un unclear whether changes in Bitcoin's fair market value on your balance sheet will flow through to the income statement, to the earnings statement. They probably will, but the good news about this is you will not just get impairment charges, but you also get cases where Bitcoin's appreciation adds to the earnings, which is something that CEOs and CFOs always like to see in their earnings reports. 
This is a huge win for publicly traded companies that choose to hold Bitcoin on their balance sheets, companies like MicroStrategy. And this accounting change is gonna have long-lived implications. It, over time, over the coming decade, it will encourage many, many more public companies to buy and hold Bitcoin on their balance sheets, especially if they can get a little kick to their earnings per share, their earnings, their EPS, buy Bitcoin appreciating, and then having that flow through to the income statement. I think too that it will become more and more apparent as inflation stays high that fiat currency, US dollars on your balance sheet, is a melting ice cube, as Michael Saylor likes to say. So, and if you're a company holding large amounts of cash on your balance sheet and you're not doing it for important reasons, like you're an insurance company and you need to hold it, hold reserves against future catastrophes, but if you're just holding large amounts of cash on your balance sheet, you are literally destroying shareholder value. It's going down by 8 to 10% a year. So as we said, this will lead to more and more companies adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet. I will link below to this list of Bitcoin treasuries. These are all the companies that hold currently hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet, publicly traded companies that report this. You can see their cost basis here, the price they paid, and the current value. And you can see how changes in Bitcoin's price would affect these various numbers. Now this, this accounting guidance, this FASB guidance still needs to be finalized, but it will almost certainly happen in the coming months since the, the board vote, the FASB vote on this was unanimous. So in the midst of this, this Bitcoin bear market, with all the volatility we're seeing, I think it's very important to focus on fundamental long-term drivers. And this is something that altcoin people have very short attention spans, they're never focused on. But this is huge because Bitcoin really is the main asset that will be put, the main crypto asset that will be put on corporate balance sheets. And this is yet another long-term driver of Bitcoin's price that is not yet being priced in by the market. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.